These are the top 10 Nike sneakers that you can grab right now in 2023. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm taking a look at some of the best Nike sneakers that have dropped in 2023 or are available in 2023. All of these sneakers you should be able to walk into a store and find or find a pair for retail online. And of course, if you wanna grab any of the shoes mentioned in today's video, I've made sure to leave affiliate links to each one of the shoes we talk about in today's video in the description below. So this top 10 Nike list is purely based on my own opinion. I put the number one shoe at the number one spot because I think that shoe is the best sneaker of this year in terms of sneakers you can buy right now. Obviously the list is completely subjective. This list could be completely different for you if you had to come up with a top 10 best Nike sneakers list. So make sure to keep that in mind while you're watching today's video. If you think a shoe should be higher up on the list or lower on the list, let me know in the comment section down below. And I feel like I don't really need to say this, but I probably should say this anyway. Today's list is not going to feature any Jordan sneakers or not really any Jordan sneakers because this is a Nike list and technically Nike and Jordan brand are two separate entities. But hey, with all that being said, let's dive right into the video. start things off with an honorable mention and that shoe is the Nike Airship PE or the Nike Jordan Airship PE. This shoe didn't make the full top 10 list because it is sort of in a way a crossover between Nike and Jordan brand. And what's so cool about this shoe is that this is actually the shoe that Michael Jordan wore on court before the Air Jordan 1 came out. So this is technically a Nike sneaker. However, I think for these retros of the shoe, it is coming out as a Jordan release because it's coming in Jordan boxes. So I'm not 100% sure exactly who's dropping the sneaker, but either way, it is technically a Nike sneaker. That said, I did actually drop a full review on this particular colorway of the shoe. If you guys want to check that out, there will be a link at the top of the screen. But this shoe is filled with a ton of history. Like I said, this is a shoe that Michael Jordan wore on court before the Air Jordan 1. The shoe that we're getting in 2023 is based off of the PE version of the Nike Airship, which is the one that Michael Jordan actually wore. The standard Nike Airship he didn't wear and is slightly different. It's got a different midsole, different outsole, things like that. And what's interesting about this shoe is that this was actually supposed to be the predecessor to the Air Force 1. And you can see that sort of inspiration between the Air Force 1 and even some Nike Blazers taking place on the upper of this shoe. Like you can definitely see where this shoe came from and it really looks like a up of the two sneakers. Not only that, but looking at this shoe, you can definitely see where the Air Jordan 1 came from. Like I said, this was the predecessor to the Air Jordan 1. And when you look at the Air Jordan 1, you can definitely see some similarities between the two shoes. And as a huge Air Jordan 1 fan, the Air Jordan 1 bread is my favorite sneaker of all time. I love the Airship. No, it's not exactly the same as the Air Jordan 1, but this shoe is filled with so much history and it's such a good looking sneaker. It looks a lot like the Air Jordan 1 that I can't help not loving this sneaker. So in addition to the fact that this shoe is sort of a Jordan Nike crossover, the other reason that this shoe is not on the actual list is because this shoe only releases in super limited quantities and only at very select retailers. Yeah, for some reason, Nike decided to make this shoe ultra limited and I don't know why because it's an awesome sneaker and a lot of people would love this shoe. Maybe that's exactly why because they know exactly what they're doing. So they're trying to get people to uh, hype up the releases. So one day they'll flood us with Nike Airships and people will be over it by then. I don't know. But either way, this is the every game colorway, the one that I just reviewed. It's very clean. I have three other colorways of this shoe. I love the shoe that much. And if you're looking for a pair of Nike Airships, I have made sure to leave links in the description below to pairs that are around retail price. So you can grab pairs of these for retail. You just have to buy them on the resale market. But hey, for around 140 bucks, you can get a really solid Jordan 1 predecessor that looks amazing. And there's a lot of different colorways to choose from. Comfort wise though, I mean, it's similar to a Jordan 1. So it's not gonna be incredible underfoot, but it's definitely wearable all day. And in my opinion, looks wise, you can't really beat it. Getting into the actual list at number 10, we've got the Nike Jaw 1. So this is NBA player Ja Morant's first signature shoe. And what's really cool about this sneaker is that it kind of fills the void of the Kyrie line. It's a great budget sneaker that you can pick up for just 110 bucks. John ja Moran plays for the Grizzlies, so obviously I'm not a huge fan. As a Sixers fan, they're just kind of I believe what you're seeing. Oh my god. Oh, there for me, and we're probably never gonna play them in the playoffs, so I mean unless they make it to the finals. But just because I don't love the Memphis Grizzlies doesn't mean I can't love the Jaw 1. This shoe overall is a really solid budget sneaker. The Nike Jaw 1 is a low top performance basketball sneaker that features really solid traction on the outsole and synthetic but still decent materials on the upper. The midsole of the shoe does feature an air zoom unit to give you some four foot cushion. Of course, the foam use in the midsole is fine. It's not super soft, but it does get the job done. And for someone who's a point guard or someone who's a little bit lighter and you're more into making quick cuts and kind of moving quickly around on the court, this is a great shoe to go with. If you're looking for max cushion, maybe not the best basketball shoe to grab. In terms of fit, the Nike Jaw 1 does fit true to size. There is a huge amount of padding around the heel. Personally, I like to grab my Nike Performance Basketball sneakers half size up because I don't love that like overly snug fit, but you can grab them however you want. I think if you're trying to go for a true to size fit, grab this shoe true to size. Although the materials in the upper are synthetic, they do provide some nice lockdown and support, and this shoe really does get the job done for a great price. 110 bucks is one of the better price points for a brand new pair of Performance Basketball sneakers 
sneakers. And for a star like John ja Morant, it's really cool for him to release a shoe that the masses can buy. Unfortunately, this first colorway of the shoe is completely sold out, and that tends to happen whenever a new signature athlete releases their first shoe. But he is releasing a bunch more colorways throughout the next couple months. So if you're looking for a pair of these, make sure to just stay on the lookout. Again, check out the links in the description below to grab a pair for retail. Seriously, for 110 bucks, it's hard to find a better performance basketball sneaker. Number nine, the Nike Air Vapor Max 23. So since the initial debut of the Nike Vapor Max in 2016, the shoe has gone through a lot of iterations year to year. And some of the versions of the Nike Air Vapor Max that released over the last couple years have been pretty out there. In fact, there was one version that you pulled the heel tab to tighten the shoe, which was a little bit weird. It seemed like back in 2020, Nike had some weird war on laces. I'm not sure exactly why that happened because laces have been around for centuries and they work just fine. But the good news is, is that after years of changes and iteration, the Nike Vapor Max 23 is back to being a really solid overall sneaker. Personally, what I love about the Vapor Max 23 is that they really focus on simplifying the sneaker. The upper of the shoe is a pretty standard fly knit upper, which feels great on foot. It's incredibly breathable and it looks good. And the midsole and outsole of the shoe, the Vapor Max unit on the sneaker, is the better version of the Vapor Max midsole. That was one change that they made over the Vapor Max's lifespan that I really appreciated. If you guys don't remember, the original Vapor Max air unit was very tall and kind of weirdly squishy in weird places. They did replace that with a better slim down version, which is still bouncy, but a little bit more supportive than the original version. And that newer version is the version that we get on the Vapor Max 23. I don't believe they've made any changes since the Vapor Max 22 or 20 or whatever the last version was, but it works, it feels good underfoot, and it looks decent on this silhouette, even though the shoe does look like a pair of cleats to me. I still don't love the way the sneaker looks. But hey, someone does because this is one of Nike's most popular sneakers, and that's why they keep releasing new versions of the shoe every single year. Some notable changes between this year's version and last year's version is that they've added some padding around the top of the ankle and this weird Elmo fur material, which I don't love, but it does feel a little bit more comfortable than the previous version. And then the insole of the sneaker now features all these holes through it, which is kind of weird. I guess it's to make it a little bit more breathable and a bit softer, I'm not sure. Either way, it does use the recycled materials that Nike loves to use in their, I guess, insoles and other parts of the shoes that can benefit from using recycled materials, which I always appreciate. But other than those changes, and I guess the now printed on Nike swoosh in the midfoot, this is kind of just a standard Vapor Max, and I'm happy about it. There is, however, one thing that I'm not so happy about, and that's the price point. This shoe retails for two $210, which I feel like is way too much for this shoe. You can grab pairs of the Nike Air Vapor Max Pluses or maybe some of last year's versions of the shoe for significantly less at the outlet or online on sale. So the fact that they're selling a stripped down version of the shoe for $210 is kind of a bummer. But it is what it is. I think if you're trying to grab a pair of Vapor Maxes, this probably is the best version of the shoe to go with. So if you're willing to pay that price, then maybe pick up a pair for yourself. As for sizing, the Nike Air Vapor Max 23 does seem to fit pretty much true to size. And what I like about this version of the shoe is that it does seem like they've widened it a little bit in the forefoot. So wide footers have a bit better of a time with the sneaker. This has always been sort of a non wide footer friendly silhouette. And I will say when you pair the softness and breathability of the fly knit upper to this relatively bouncy and well cushioned Air Vapor Max unit in the midsole, the shoe is pretty comfortable on foot and very comfortable all day. Number eight, the Nike LeBron Next Gen. So this shoe in a lot of ways is the second version of the Nike LeBron 20. It still features the 20 branding, the double X's. However, this is sort of, I guess, the low top variant of the shoe, even though they're both low tops. Every year, Nike releases two versions of the LeBron, a high top and a low top. And it seems like this is the low top or the second version of the Nike LeBron 20. That said though, the reason that the Nike LeBron Next Gen is the highest basketball sneaker on the list is because this shoe takes a lot of the things that make the Nike LeBron 20 great and does it all for a $40 cheaper price point. The Nike LeBron 20 retails for $200 and the Nike LeBron Next Gen retails for $160. So I mean, really you're getting a premium performance basketball sneaker for a pretty middle of the road price. So the Nike LeBron Next Gen features a large curved air unit which allows for some really nice cushion underfoot but also some nice flexibility in the midsole of the shoe. This shoe isn't as soft as the LeBron 20 underfoot, but it's pretty reasonable, especially for that price point. And especially for bigger guys, this is a great sneaker to go with. I mean, LeBron is a huge guy and he wears his sneaker and they're specifically designed for him. So if you're a larger dude, the LeBron is always a good way to go. One of the standout features of the Nike LeBron 20 is the traction pattern. This shoe grips the court like crazy. And what's interesting about this traction pattern is that as you can see, the outsole is actually inspired by Akron, Ohio, or the roads that make up Akron, Ohio, which is where LeBron James is from. The upper of the shoe is made up of a mesh material, which provides some nice support and also some breathability. It's not a lot, but it's enough. And for me, a standout feature of the upper, and I guess the shoe overall, is how well cushioned it is. As far as sizing goes for the Nike LeBron Next Gen, and even the Nike LeBron 20, 
this shoe does fit true to size. So if you're grabbing a pair of these, go true to size. Even if you're a wide footer, you should be good to go. Now what's cool about this colorway in particular is that this is actually a FaZe Clan collaboration. That's why you've got the black and the red and of course the FaZe Clan logo. I think it's a great looking shoe and if you're a fan of FaZe, you can grab a pair of FaZe LeBrons, which is pretty crazy. So if you're looking for a top of the line performance basketball sneaker to play in, the Nike LeBron Next Gen is a great way to go, especially for 160 bucks and it looks great and it's easy to wear. I wouldn't wear it for lifestyle personally, but you can do that if you want. Number seven, the Nike Vaporfly 3. So this shoe is one of Nike's lightest and best race day performance sneakers. In fact, the shoe is so insanely light, it almost feels like you're holding a sheet of paper. It's crazy. The Vaporfly 3 comes with a super thin fly knit upper that has huge amounts of breathability because there's a bunch of holes on the upper of the shoe. And the midsole of the shoe is super thick Zoom X, which is Nike's softest underfoot cushion. Plus, it's also one of their lightest foam, so it really feels like you're not really wearing anything when you're wearing this shoe. I mean, in terms of weight. Now, one of the standout features on the Nike Vaporfly 3 is the carbon fiber fly plate that runs through the center of the midsole. Now, what this carbon fiber plate does is propel you into the next step. And let me tell you, when you're wearing this shoe, it feels like you're on a trampoline. It's insane. Now, as someone who prefers max cushion shoes and prefers walking around in those max cushion shoes rather than running in those max cushion shoes, this shoe is a little bit too bouncy for me. It takes a cushion which feels stupid soft underfoot and makes it more of a trampoline experience. But hey, for someone who's running races or trying to set new lap times, this is a great way to go. This shoe literally propels you into the next step. It's crazy. Even when you're not running, it feels like you're bouncing when you're walking. And that really is all due to that carbon fiber fly plate in the midsole of the shoe. Like it springs you forward. It's absolutely insane. Now it's not that flexible of a shoe because obviously the carbon fiber is in there, but it gives you so much bounce. It's really an experience you have to try to understand. With that being said, I wouldn't really say that this is an everyday lifestyle sneaker and it doesn't come with an everyday lifestyle sneaker price. This shoe retails for $250 and it's the kind of shoe that you'd grab if you had a big race coming up or if you just like running a long way without feeling that tired because this shoe really does a lot of the work for you. Stylistically, this shoe is obviously race inspired, but I do have to say it's a good looking sneaker, especially in the gray colorway, which I wasn't able to grab because they were sold out. But overall, it's a solid race day sneaker. If you like a crazy bouncy experience, this is a great way to go. However, for that experience, you're gonna have to pay a hefty price tag of $250. Now on to fit, this shoe does fit pretty much true to size. I will say that this shoe is definitely designed for more narrow footed people. I'm a narrow footed person, so it fit me okay, but it did feel a little snug around the forefoot. For wide footers, maybe go up half a size or just don't grab this shoe. I'm not sure exactly what you should do in that situation, but I would definitely say that if you're a narrow footer, go true to size. If you're a wide footer, maybe try the shoe on first before you buy it to make sure that you're grabbing the right size for you. One other small complaint that I had that Nike seems to think is not really a problem, especially if you read the text on their website, is that the stability of this shoe isn't great, especially in the heel area. Because the heel is so thin, which I guess doesn't really matter when you're running straight lines, you do feel a little bit wobbly, especially when you're up this high on the back of the shoe. So that's something to keep in mind if you are looking for a more stable shoe. The forefoot of the shoe is pretty stable because the foam extends out pretty wide around the front of your foot. So that's not a huge issue, but something to keep in mind if you're making sharp turns, which I don't think you will be in this shoe, but keep that in mind if you're looking for a more stable running shoe, this is probably not the best way to go. But hey, if you fall, you're gonna fall very quickly and very far forward because you're gonna get trampolined into that whatever. Number six, the Nike Dunk Low. So even though the Nike Dunk first released back in 1985, granted as a high top version of the shoe, the popularity of the sneaker didn't really hit until the mid 2000s and once again in the 2020s. And what's crazy is that the popularity of this shoe just continues to grow even though this sneaker is over 30 years old. Actually, I guess that's the case for a lot of Nike sneakers like the Air Force One and a lot of Jordans out there, but this shoe's popularity or I guess meteoric rise in popularity is pretty insane to watch. So the Nike Dunk first released as a basketball sneaker, specifically specifically for college basketball. And unfortunately, because it was released a few months after the Air Jordan 1, that shoe kind of overshadowed the Nike Dunk, and this shoe wasn't incredibly popular for the first couple years it was around. However, as time went on, the shoe did build a cult following, specifically within the skateboarding community, and a lot of people really grew to love this sneaker and made it as popular as it is today. Now, obviously, there are multiple versions of the Nike Dunk. You've got the original, the Nike Dunk High, you've got the Nike Dunk Low, and of course, the Nike SB Dunk, which is mainly a skateboarding shoe. But in today's video, I'm talking about the Nike Dunk Low because that's the pair that Nike seems to be spamming us with at the moment and that's the pair that's most readily available. Unfortunately, as of right now, this Syracuse or orange and white pair is the only pair I have in my possession. Unfortunately, this shoe is completely sold out and so is the green pair that I'm using in B-roll. However, that black and white pair, the Panda pair, which everyone seems to know and love or know and hate realistically, is a pair that keeps getting released by Nike over and over and over every couple months. And the black and white Panda Dunks are a pair that even though Nike keeps releasing hundreds of thousands of pairs of them, they keep growing in popularity because people who aren't specifically sneakerheads are starting to find out about them and really love them as well. 
However, if you're not able to grab a pair of pandas, Nike does have some more standard colorways available on their website right now. So if you guys wanna check those out, link in the description below. But overall, the Nike Dunk Low is a simple, clean and very recognizable Nike silhouette that yes, released back in 1985, but is still one of those sneakers that is incredibly popular to this day. Comfort wise, the Dunk Low is not the best. I think the SB Dunks are a little bit more comfortable because they feature more padding specifically for skateboarders, but those shoes are a little bit more difficult to get. And as for sizing, this shoe does seem to fit true to size, but if you're watching this video, you've probably tried on a pair of Dunks before, so go with your standard Dunk size and any pair of Nike Dunks that you grab. Rounding off the Nike Dunk Lows, one of the best things about this shoe is its retail price point and the fact that it only sells for $110, which makes this shoe very accessible. Number five, the Nike Pegasus 40. So I'm sure you're familiar with the Nike Pegasus line because it's one of their most popular sneaker lines of all time. The Nike Pegasus running sneakers have been around for decades, and the Nike Pegasus 40 is the latest iteration of that shoe. Now what's great about this shoe besides the $130 price point, which is really solid for a good running sneaker, is that this shoe is a great all-around neutral shoe. One of the things that I love about the Peg 40 in particular is this full-length React foam midsole, which is super Super soft underfoot and in addition to that you also get an air zoom unit in the forefoot and in the heel for that extra bit of bounce and cushion seriously this shoe feels great underfoot it's soft but it's not too soft it's not firm but it gives you some nice balance it really is like a perfect middle ground of comfort and I love it the upper of the shoe is also pretty great it comes in this engineered mesh material and is really well padded it's another great example of doing something right it's not too soft it still offers some support but it's also not too stiff to where it feels uncomfortable it offers just the right amount of breathability and you've got some really nice padding around the heel Style-wise, the Peg 40 is also pretty clean. It's a pretty standard-looking Nike sneaker. Over the last couple iterations, the shoe featured this like crazy racing-inspired spike on the heel, and it seems like Nike has kind of reduced that a little bit, which I definitely prefer. And as far as sizing, the Peg 40s do seem to fit true to size, which makes sense because Pegasus sneakers usually fit true to size. It's a great all-around sneaker. It's a very solid neutral running shoe, and if you're looking for a shoe that you can go on runs with in the morning and then go to the office with later in the day, this is a great shoe to go with, especially for that $130 price point. And again, if you really want to make this shoe pop, throw on a pair of Apothecary socks and you'll be good to go. So if you don't already know, Apothecary is a sock brand that I co-founded to create your sneakers' favorite socks. For years, I was looking for socks that not only matched my sneakers, but felt amazing on foot. And it got to a point where I was like, you know what? I'm sick of this. I gotta just create my own sock brand. So that's what I did. In addition to our limited collections like this rose collection, which comes in four different colorways, we also have an essentials line, which comes in a ton of different colorways. You can match with any pair of sneakers. Plus, they all feel amazing on foot. You can grab them through the link in the description below at apothecary.com, A-P-T-H-C-R-Y, and you'll experience one of the most comfortable and best looking socks you've ever had. But hey, shameless plug out of the way, let's get right back into the video. Number four, the Nike Air Force One Low. So this is probably the most well-known and most popular shoe on the list. In fact, it's been around since 1983. Originally designed as a low top alternative to the standard Air Force Ones, this basketball sneaker has become a fashion icon and a style icon that people still rock on the daily today. Also an interesting piece of information about the AF One Low is that this is a shoe that sort of started off the limited collaborations and limited collections trend. In fact, it's because of some store owners in Baltimore that this shoe became the base for some different limited colorways and collaborations. They realized that the AF1 Low was incredibly popular in Baltimore and started to ask Nike for limited colorways that they could sell exclusively at their stores. I do also want to say that Baltimore is the best city out there. It's my home city. It's not that great of a city, but it's my home city, so I love it. Also, go Ravens. So what Nike did was create the Color of the Month series so that every month these stores would get a new colorway of the sneaker so that people could walk in and grab a new pair of these shoes every month. And that's actually a series that Nike has revived today. In fact, in 2023, Nike is re-releasing some color of the month pairs. But obviously, the triple white colorway of the shoe is the original version of the shoe. This is not exactly the standard triple white. This is the uh, Nocta version of the shoe, or realistically, the Drake version of the shoe. But I do also have a couple pairs of the triple white colorway, and that by far is the most popular Nike AF1 low. In fact, if you're watching this video, you probably had a couple pairs of AF1 lows growing up, and whenever they got dirty, you either had to clean them or buy a new pair because at the time, they were still relatively inexpensive. Now, unfortunately, over the last year, Nike has raised the price point of the standard AF1 low to $110, which I think is ridiculous because the shoe has always been sold for under $100. So kind of a bummer there, but regardless, if you grab the AF1 low, you're getting an icon, a staple in a lot of people's collections, and a shoe that you can literally never go wrong with. Plus, for a shoe that released in 1983, it's surprisingly comfortable. The air unit in the midsole makes it soft underfoot. The padding on the upper is really great. And again, you can't beat the 
style. The reason that I put this shoe higher on the list than the Nike Dunk Lows, even though they're a very similar sneaker, is one, because I like this shoe more, and two, because this shoe is much more widely available. And while yes, this shoe was originally designed as a basketball sneaker, as was a lot of the early Jordan sneakers, it's not a sneaker that I would say to go out and play basketball in today. It's not that comfortable of a shoe on court, but it gets the job done as a lifestyle sneaker. So for 110 bucks, you get a fashion icon that I absolutely think is worth picking up. And if you're grabbing a pair of the AF1 Lows, go true to size and you should be totally fine. Number three, the Nike Zoom Vomero 5. So the Vomero 5 is a retro running sneaker that is making a huge comeback in 2023. This shoe first re-released back in 2020 because of an Uckhold Wall collaboration. And now in 2023, Nike is releasing some of the better, simpler colorways of the shoe to the public. And even though this shoe was originally designed as a running sneaker, it's definitely become a lifestyle icon. It's something that I think a lot of people are gravitating towards because of its styling on the upper. It's complex, but it definitely fits with the modern times. And a benefit of being originally designed as a running sneaker, this shoe is very comfortable on foot all day. So the upper of the shoe is primarily made up of fabric and mesh details with some presumably synthetic leather details around the upper of the shoe. You've also got some TPU hits on the midfoot and towards the heel of the sneaker. And it really creates a shoe that definitely has sort of a futuristic, but also a retro aesthetic. You've got Nike Zoom in the midsole of the sneaker as well as Cushlon foam. The upper of the shoe is very well padded. It's a very comfortable lifestyle sneaker. And I gotta say that some of the colorways that Nike is releasing right now some of the more monochromatic colorways like this yellow colorway or the gray colorway that released a couple months back look very very clean and are super easy to rock they're kind of going off that new balance vibe that sort of retro running sneaker look that has been popular over the last couple years they're really leaning into that with the vomero 5 and that's something that really makes sense for nike to do because they have such a huge backlog of retro running sneakers shoes like the vomero 5 that look really great are really interesting on the upper and are still very comfortable to this day and for a relatively unassuming running sneaker it's pretty impressive how popular this sneaker has become in the fashion world for 150 bucks you're getting a really interesting looking running sneaker that's incredibly popular right now that also fits true to size and is very comfortable. I mean, hey, if you like the way the sneaker looks, you can't really go wrong. Number two, the Nike Zoom X Invincible 3. So this shoe is the follow-up to the very popular Nike Invincible 2, which in my opinion was the most comfortable sneaker available on the market when it released. And this year, Nike decided to follow up that release with a brand new version of the shoe that in my opinion is a huge improvement because it looks so much better. And surprisingly, with those better looks also comes a slightly more comfortable makeup. The midsole of the sneaker is made up of Zoom X foam, which is not only light, but super soft. And unlike the very Fly 3 that we talked about earlier on in the video, this shoe does not feature a carbon fiber fly plate, which means you feel all of the Zoom X underneath your foot. And man, it feels amazing. If you're looking for an insanely cushioned, max cushioned shoe, this is the way to go. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive at 180 bucks, but if you're looking for the ultimate cushion sneaker, this is it. Now, one downside to this very light and insanely soft Zoom X foam is that it creases very easily. In fact, when you take the shoe out of the box, it's already creased, even though you haven't even tried the shoe on. But the more that you wear it, the more creased it gets. It doesn't look that bad, but it's something to keep in mind if you don't like creasing on your shoes. But hey, if that's a trade-off that you have to make to feel this kind of comfort underfoot, it's worth it. The upper of the shoe comes in flyknit. It's a little bit different than your standard flyknit. It's a little bit more tightly woven. There are zones of breathability, as Nike calls it, which I, I guess is fine. It's relatively breathable. It's not as breathable as some other flyknit shoes in the market, but it's fine. The heel of the shoe features some nice padding, which I really appreciate, and so does the tongue. And overall, the comfort of the upper of the shoe is not mind-blowing, but when you pair it to the Zoom X midsole, it's an amazing experience on foot. And while, yes, this shoe is technically designed as a running sneaker, I would say you could rock this shoe as a lifestyle shoe, and that's mainly what I do with this sneaker, and it feels great. It looks good. It's a great everyday wear. You can wear it to the office. You can wear it in a run. It doesn't really matter. It's just a good-looking shoe that comes in a ton of different colorways. Sizing-wise, the Zoom X Invincible Run 3 does fit true to size, so if you're grabbing a pair of these, that's what I would recommend. Mend. And again, stupid comfortable underfoot. So if comfort is your main goal and you're looking for just an insanely soft pair of shoes, the Zoom X Invincible 3, even for the $180 price point, is worth it. However, the Zoom X Invincible 2 is pretty similar in comfort. In fact, it's almost exactly the same in comfort. So if you're looking for that same comfort, but in a slightly uglier package, go with the Zoom X Invincible 2 and you should be able to grab it for probably $20 to $40 cheaper. And if you want to learn more about the most comfortable shoe available on the market, in my opinion, the Zoom X Invincible Run 3, make sure to check out my review by clicking the link at the top of the screen. Finally, at number one, the Nike Air Max One Big Bubble. So yes, technically this is a limited release. And as of right now, it is 
kind of sold out. However, Nike has said that they're going to come out with more colorways of this version of the Air Max 1, and you can grab pairs of these on the resale market right now for retail or even below in some sizes. So the Nike Air Max 1 Big Bubble is a really interesting sneaker. In fact, this is the original version of the Nike Air Max 1. So for the first six months of the Nike Air Max 1 being available on the market, it came with this large air bubble. However, People started to realize that this air bubble was starting to crack over time in colder temperatures and what they had to do was actually reduce the size of the air bubble and that's become the popular Nike Air Max 1 air bubble size that we see today. However, now in 2023 for Air Max Day, Nike decided to re-release the large bubble Air Max 1, obviously with newer technology so that it won't crack in colder temperatures. And I do have to say that this shoe is more comfortable underfoot than the standard Nike Air Max 1. I think that's both due to the fact that the air bubble is larger in the shoe and also the foam used in the midsole of the sneaker is also a little bit softer. So this Air Max Day colorway of the shoe is the original Nike Air Max 1 colorway. However, like I said, Nike is going to release more colorways in the future of the larger bubble Air Max 1, which in my opinion, while it's not as recognizable as the standard Air Max 1, is a better shoe overall because it's a little bit more comfortable. Also, in case you didn't know, the Air Max 1 was actually the first shoe to feature a visible air unit in the midsole. It was not the first shoe to have an air unit in the midsole, but it was the first shoe to feature a cutout to show you that air unit technology in the midsole of the shoe. And while yes, this shoe is an older Nike silhouette, this version of the shoe is brand new for 2023. And personally, as a Nike fan, this is a really cool piece of Nike history that is actually better than the standard version of the shoe. So if you're grabbing a pair of Air Max 1s and you're watching this after the new colorways of the shoe release, I would grab those versions of the shoe over the standard pairs because they just feel better underfoot. Price point wise, the Air Max 1 Big Bubble retails for 150 bucks, which is pretty standard for a pair of Air Maxes, and sizing wise, this shoe does seem to fit true to size. One of the things that I love about Nike is that they have so many timeless silhouettes, like the Air Max 1, like the Air Force 1, like the Dunks, shoes that were designed decades ago but still look modern to this day. And the Air Max 1 Big Bubble is a perfect example of that. It's a simple, clean silhouette that matches with a lot of different things, both stylistically and colorway-wise, and it's definitely a shoe worth picking up if you're interested in Air Maxes or want to grab a piece of Nike history. But hey, that pretty much wraps up the entire video for today. Let me know your thoughts on this list and whether you feel like I missed anything. And if I did, let me know in the comment section down below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.